Welcome to Itaraya Gidi, Labarin Dunia Nagaskia, Akukon Dumadu, Real Life Story. Today I'll be telling you a real life story on how I married someone out of pity. So I would like you to listen attentively because I would need your help to give me feedbacks on what you think I need to do in regards to how to move on with my life. And also, the same person was cheating on me. So, get ready. I do want you to please listen attentively. All right, are we ready? I'm going to be playing you the voice notes from the victim from Sharing Life Issues with Her Excellency Hajami. Good morning, everyone. I'm on Sharing Life Issues with Her Excellency Hajami. Our beautiful auntie, thank you so much, Adia, for the opportunity to air out my experience. Thank you. Um, uh, we got married with my ex, 2016. But before then, we were family friends. Her younger brother was my friend, my secondary school mate, and he introduced me to his family home in secondary school because my parents were far from where I was schooling. My parents were in Kanu and I was schooling in Abuja. So he introduced me to his parents, his family. They became my family. They became, his parents became my parents here in Abuja. So they loved me. We became friends. In fact, I was more comfortable in their house than even my family house. So we continued our friendship like that. Even after my secondary school, I went back to Kano. So we continued until 2013 when they lost their mom. Then I was even in Kaduna. So I had to come back to Abuja that period to follow them, to join them, to mourn miles of their mother so in that period i i noticed that my 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 ex my ex that is their eldest in the house she's their eldest in the house you understand she was going through emotional and psychological trauma she was going through serious emotional pains you understand she 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 was going through those pains because one she lost her mom secondly she doesn't have she she's not married you understand so i i was always around her trying to tear her up trying to encourage her that there is more to life than you know, since there is life, there is hope. I even introduced her that we should start Monday, Thursday fasting, you know, so that at least we need to, if we are we're going through issues like this, we need to be very close to God so that God will, will, will put us aright, you understand? So I was always, only the, I was the only one very, very close to her then, you know, because I had pity for her and all that. So one day when we were talking, she proposed that I should marry her. 
that uh, her aid is going, nobody is forthcoming. Anybody that comes to ask for her hand in marriage will just go. You know, it got to a point that the family members think she has spiritual problem and all that, you know. So when she brought this uh, proposal, I was shocked at the instant because I have never thought about it. I have never expected anything like that. But this is a lady that is older than me. Well, she's six years older than me. Her third younger brother is my friend, is my mate. So I was shocked initially. So I thought she was, initially I thought she was joking. Maybe it was out of the, 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 the emotional trauma she was going through, that was what, her, what made her to utter such a proposal. So, after two weeks of that, from that day, she still brought the, the issue again. That uh, she told me something last two weeks and I didn't say anything. That was my reason that I should consider her. And frankly speaking, that period, I was just 29, 28, 29 years. I was not thinking of marriage at all. Marriage was the last thing on my mind. You understand? I wanted to enjoy life before before I even think of maybe when I'm 35, I'll, I'll settle down. But now she wants me to marry her. So I told her I should give me time so that I'll discuss with my parents. I'll discuss with people. I need advice on such issues. She said, okay, let's take my time. So when I went home and discussed with my parents, they, they initially they declined because of the age difference between us. But I had to convince my parents that these people are my they're like my family too. She's she she's just like my sister too, you understand? And moreover, I feel there is understanding between me and her. You understand? So I tried as much as possible to convince. It wasn't a, an easy part convincing my parents mm -hmm. because I'm the only son in my family and the first child of the family too. Yes. And so it wasn't an easy task convincing my parents and my siblings. So you understand. So uh, at the end, child, they gave me their blessings towards. They married, they gave me their blessing and I, you know, we did the marriage in one piece and so let me cut the story short. After the marriage, like six to seven months after the marriage, I lost my job. So we started from scratch again, you know, but the good thing is that before the marriage, I enrolled her, I paid for how to, to learn tailoring. I bought industrial and, uh, and local machine for her to be sewing in the house. I don't have, then I don't have the money to rent a shop for her. So she was sewing from the house. I go out to get customers, you know, to advertise and bring customers for her too. Like that, we were surviving. I thought we had understanding. We actually had understanding then, you know, we're best of friends. We, we act more of friends than married couple, you know. We try as much as possible not to sleep with grudges, you know, and all that. The marriage was sweet until the year 2020 when she got a job. I was the same person that paid for that job in the Ministry of Health under FCBA. I paid for the job and unfortunately, luckily, the job came out. I've paid for other jobs that they ate our money anyway, but this one, with luck and the blessings of God, the, the job came out. And when it came out, I asked her to submit her, her credentials. The reason why I did that was, I was using diploma before. That was why I had issues in my previous, uh, I had problem in my previous place of work. They did retrenchment and it affected me because of my diploma. So I had to go back to school. That period I was still in school. I've, I, haven't gra I haven't graduated already. So I asked her, since she's having degree, I asked her to submit her, her CV. Then the man that even gave, that made 
the that gave me the work, the opportunity, was like, ah, you are, you are, you are supposed to bring your own, not your wife's. I said, no, I'm still using diploma, so just give her, since this one is, uh, her own is degree, give her the work so that, you know, before I collect my statement of result, by then she must have settled down in the ministry, she must have known one or two people, then by then she will be able to fix me into the ministry too. So that was our, our agreement. You understand? The man was even surprised that ah, so such men actually exist. That man, guy, you try you that you, I really tried for making this sacrifice. I said, yeah, it is understanding. I believe once you have understanding with your partner, there's nothing that you will not be able to sacrifice. You understand? So I've been making sacrifices from the beginning of the marriage. So why this this is the least I can even do. So she started the work, the, the work. She started March 2020 during the coronavirus period. So after some months, I started noticing changes in her. She started being bossy. She started keeping too much malice. She started extending corals. She started keeping late. You know, she started, in fact, things some domestic work that she normally do before she stopped doing them. Well, from the beginning of the marriage, I she said she doesn't like going to market. She doesn't like doing something. She doesn't like doing laundry. I said it's not a problem. You know, and since I don't have money to 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 employ a, a house help, I'll be doing that. I was the one doing everything for her. I go to the market for her. I come back, I do the cook, I do cook, if I, I can cook more than her, it's not as if I'm blowing my trumpet. She even prefers to eat my food than her own, you understand? So I do most of all these things for her. My friends even go out to God that my wife has turned me into a houseboy. It is not like that. I, in fact, I derive pleasure in doing all that for my wife. Even when I was staying alone, I do it for myself, talk more of my wife. So I derive pleasure and happiness doing it for somebody I'm married to, you understand? So it's nothing. I don't I give deaf ears to all those rumors. I don't give a, I don't give a damn about it. So I I tried my best to make my, my ex happy. Seriously. We've never slept with grudges. She's not the type that's, that apologizes anyway. She always have, she has this pride. And maybe it was because of the age differences between us. I try as much as possible to apologize. Even if I am right, I will still apologize just to keep peace, just to maintain peace. You understand? Most of the times if we're quarreling, I have never in my life laid hands on a woman. And I don't, I will never do that. So most of the times if we're even quarreling, I'll just go out, spend some hours outside, then come back, you know, and as I'm coming back, I'll just come back with, you know, play, I'll try to play with her just to, you know, maintain peace, you know, apologize, I apologize to her, in fact, almost all the time. You know, so we've been, we've been very, very cool until when she got this job. Everything changed. Everything changed. She started keeping late. She started, you know, misbehaving. She started bringing out that age difference between me and her. And so, in December, that was eight months, eight months after she got the job, she asked me to divorce her that she wants to go. I begged, begged, begged. In fact, it became very worse that she went two months straight. She didn't allow me to touch her. In fact, it's, it's like I, 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 it's like I was disgusting herself. When we go to sleep, she will use pillows to demarcate our sleeping position. I was like, what's, what's all this? I have begged, begged between God and man. I have begged. I went down on my knees to beg this lady to forgive me in any way I have offended her. But she insisted that she wants to go. In fact, she she made she made me as in she she said that it is now that she realized that marriage is not about 
all about love. Mm. But to my greatest surprise, I did not know that this lady had gotten somebody else. I did not even know until when she left. She left my house on the 31st December 2020 on our anniversary, on our 40th year anniversary. That was the day I went out, came back home, and met the house empty. She made away with her, both her things and my things. She practically emptied the house. Practically emptied the house. Not, in fact, the least item in the house is a spoon and a plate. She did not drop even one for me. She did not. She moved away everything. And I was shocked and surprised that what have I really done to, 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 to deserve all this? I have never had, a, we've never had any major quarrel. In fact, I have never in my life laid my hand on a woman. She has never caught me cheating. She has, in fact, she has never slept with hunger. So I don't know what I did to deserve all that. So, so after she left, I went to meet her parents, her, her father. Her father was still alive then. Mm -hmm. I went to meet him with her sister. And I, and I asked them if I have done anything wrong. I, I asked, practically asked the father. I remember I asked the father if I have offended, ever offended him. And things will happen like this and he will not even call me to confirm for me, but rather he supported his daughter to leave my house. And I heard he was one that even paid for the truck that came to pack things from my house. She came with her brothers, her cousins, you know, they came and emptied my house and left. I asked the father if I have ever offended him. He said, no. I said, okay, what have I done? What have I done? The father said, uh, uh, since it has happened like this, that I should go, that every God should give everybody his, uh, his heart desires. I was shocked. Thank God I went with a friend as a witness. So the friend, my friend asked us to go that they've already concluded this issue. So I left. It was after then I started hearing rumors that she already had somebody, a very, very wealthy man. In fact, one of her uncle from her mother's for her mom from her mother's side came to my house. This man came to my house and narrated everything. The reason is that when I was still staying with them, when I was in their house, I used to I used to help this man, most especially my clothes. Most of my clothes, when he comes from the village, that is our gather my clothes and dash him, you understand? So maybe all those things that, all those things I was doing for him, then he really appreciated it. That was why when he heard about this thing, he came to my house and gave me some secrets that I never know. Ladies and gentlemen, do you know that this lady, this lady had issues with her womb when she was in school, when she was in the university. She took him for a guy six months pregnancy for a guy then she had issues with the guy that period and she went to hospital to abort that baby she did not even abort it through d and c she they gave her in that she, she was scared of d and c so they have to they gave her injection they injected her that she was going to burn it she was going to deliver that baby still there so unfortunately for her, the baby died inside her and started uh, rotting inside her womb. The man, the, her uncle told me that she almost died that period because she was smelling like a dead body, that they had to rush her. He was the one and the mom that rushed her to the hospital. Ladies and gentlemen, guess the hospital, the same hospital this woman took me to that were doing tests not knowing they were hiding, they concealed the secret from me. That she had issues with her womb, that her womb was infected completely, that she would not be able to use that, they have, they have to remove the womb. This woman was in my house for good four years. We dated three years plus four years. 
she did never she had she didn't tell me she had never made mention of it her i that very day i cried like a baby because in that marriage she had, she has accused my mom of bewitching her before she has accused me of having low sperm that uh, the doctor told her that i have low sperm imagine she accused my mom she has accused me you know and she knew where the problem lies now she has eloped with a richer man and they, i heard that the man is a very rich man that man is a widower his wife died and left him with children so somebody connected them that uh, the man is looking for somebody that will, a lady that will take care of his children now she has left me to to be with the man the man rented house for her in kubwa in abuja here that was why she emptied my house and left that is not even my problem the material thing is not even my problem she kept me in the dark for seven good years she kept secrets for me even when she was in my house the third year of our marriage i called her that we should even adopt a child so that you know sometimes they, i've read in so many places i've experienced so many places that people will adopt you uh, yeah. a child and before you know that child will bring blessings and god will answer their prayer they will they will, they will have children you understand so I've, I've brought i brought that that idea that we should adopt a child she declined in fact this lady i noticed in our marriage that she doesn't like children close to her at all we have children in our the company that i'm staying we have children there you understand they don't come close to her at all she doesn't play with them they are if, even scared of her i was surprised that a lady that that is praying for a child doesn't even like children around her so it's very disturbing well me i just felt that children are intimidating her maybe she's having uh, this and that was why I did not complain or ask her. I felt maybe she's intimidated by children. You understand? Maybe because she 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 doesn't have her own. So I don't even know what to put together then. I just left her. But bottom line is I I did not deserve what she did to me. She left me very, very broken. She left me in the dark, you know. When she was even going, she emptied me. That period, I was sleeping on a bare floor. She moved away with the mattress, with everything, rug, everything in the house. She left with it. Now, the man she left with, the man has a, they've, they've separated with the man. He, he did not marry her again. She has to come back to her father's house. Now, now as we're speaking, as I'm sending this note now, she's back to her father's house with this those same thing she left with. She called me a few months ago that she wants to return my items. I told her I don't need them. I don't need them again. That she should. She should. She shouldn't worry. Now she's begging to come back. I I I don't know. I can never. I don't think I can accept her again in fact but the fact that i've known most of the secrets she was hiding from me i can never accept her again you understand despite that i still loved her i in fact i loved i still still love her but i cannot accept her again i cannot accept her again now i'm having difficulties in trusting anybody any woman at all I'm having difficulties in loving any woman. I'm having difficulties in trusting any woman. This is the third year of our separation now, and I am still single. Please, I don't know what to do. Maybe you guys, maybe your advices can actually help me. Thank you very much. Thank you for listening. Thank you for the audience. Thank you so much for you taking your time to listen to my little experience thank you Hadja, for giving me the opportunity to share my views there are still much more but i don't want to take your time with with plenty uh talk thank you very much
So, everything I see in here, it's someone who took advantage of the other person. This guy was innocent. She came into his life by gaslighting him, by manipulating him, because it's all obvious. We all listen to the story. Why do people go around harming people, especially people that have helped you? So here is the situation whereby a medical doctor, and I believe that medical doctor needs to be found. We need to do something about him because we cannot contribute to people's trauma. That's trauma right there. He went through hell because the medical doctor was helping her to lie that those things were happening when they're not happening. Why should a medical doctor be found doing things like that, involved with lying about somebody's medicals? Why? In the name of keeping a marriage? We've lost it in this generation, I'll say. It's so pathetic. First, you manipulated him. He married you out of pity. Islamically, it's okay for a guy to marry you if he's younger than you. So that's why he married you. But you did not have to now start using him as though you're older than him, so you have to control him. You should have thought about that before asking him to marry you. This was somebody who was there for you, cooking for you, cleaning for you, making sure that everything is taken care of, paying the damn bills because Islamically, the husband is supposed to provide everything. So he went through the Islamic way to treat you good and all you could do is to maltreat him. And then to make it worse, you even went ahead sleeping with another man. Obviously, you were already cheating with a rich man when you were in the marriage. Why do people do this? And then you're like, oh, marriage is not all about love. You did not know that when you asked him, when you're begging him to marry you. Brother, move on. Do not take her back. Allah would heal you by the special grace of God. In regards to learning to trust other people, I know we did talk about that. I did tell you to make sure you heal properly before moving on with anyone. For me, I would say you can move on without even being with someone, but I guess other people think you cannot move on <laughs> without being with someone. When, so when I say I've moved on, that means I I'm living my life. So start living your life. I would advise you that it seems that you're still a little confused. I know you're healing. You've healed to a certain extent for you to be able to tell your story. But I beg you, I would want you to seek more counseling of which sharing life issues will continue to do that. However, I do want you to believe that there is love out there if you are willing to try again. If you're not willing to try again, it's okay. But if you're willing to try again, you should give somebody a chance to love you properly. You just have to be careful. Would I say you're not careful the last time? No. It's like we have a lot of crazy people out there now. That's why sometimes, no matter how careful you are, we just pray that the Almighty Allah would, and the Almighty God not let us come in contact with evil people like that. So I'm begging you, try to go for counseling, sharing life issues with Her Excellency Haji Ami will continue to do that. However, do not take her back, I'm begging you. I'll leave the comment section for you guys to kindly tell him what to do because I believe he needs to hear from you. That's why we're here. But for me, for sharing life issues with Her Excellency Hajami, no going back. Because I know you do not want to go back and I do support that. I did speak to you and you are like, you're done. I do support your being done. There is nothing to go back to. Only if you want her to harm you more. 
then there will be more danger. Anybody that can do that to you when you really helped her out of pity to marry her, then that person can unfortunately harm you. So we do not want that. Kindly subscribe to our YouTube channel. Leave the comment down below to help a brother, to let him know what he needs to do. Thank you so much. Give us a thumbs up if you like all our videos. Feel free to share. I love you.